One of the things that quantum mechanics reveals to us is that if we zoom in enough, it turns out a dot or a particle does not always behave like this finite particle or a little ball of stuff. Instead, it behaves as this washed out wave. Now, if we take our daily world and zoom out to astronomical scales, right, where scales of, of planetary systems, turns out this washed out wave, the behavior of this washed out wave emerges once again at that scale as well. When I first figured this out, um, nothing interesting was happening. It was just late at night and I was doing math, preparing for class next day. The first thing I thought was, well, probably someone like Laplace or Lagrange had already figured this out in like the 17 or the 1800s. So I spent a long time looking through the literature, trying to uh, find an equivalent calculation. And I, and I couldn't find one. When we talk about Newtonian physics, it is limited to the macroscopic world, the world that we live in. In this world, things are kind of simple. The Newtonian worldview of physics was exceptionally successful uh, all throughout the 17 and 1800s. By the end of the 1800s and early 1900s, however, it became clear that it wasn't the complete picture, that this simple cause and effect type universe fails when you go to the very, very small scale. At the very small scale, a somewhat different set of laws emerge. When we look at particles that are microscopic, that are fundamental, such as the electron, the proton, that kind of atomic and subatomic scale does not follow Newton's simple law. Okay, instead, it follows a somewhat more complicated equation called Schrodinger's equation or Schrodinger's wave equation. And this is where the, the so-called particle wave duality often um, comes up where people talk about particles behaving as waves and waves behaving as, as particles at the, at the very, very microscopic scale, that there is no difference between those two concepts. So in some sense, you can think of the Schrodinger equation as the parent of Newton's laws, right? It is the more fundamental equation, which once you zoom out, reproduces Newton's laws. So when studying the truly macroscopic problem, if we take now our, our daily world and zoom out to astronomical scales, the Schrodinger's equation emerges at that scale as well. The fact that this quintessential quantum equation applies at the largest scale, if you will, the fact that the Schrodinger equation is relevant is important because we, over the last century, have developed many, many solutions to that equation. So we can now borrow from the mathematical realm of quantum mechanics. What this does is it allows us to understand some of the computer simulations that we do on understanding large-scale structure in the universe within a framework that's familiar to us. And weirdly, that framework, that mathematical framework, comes to us from quantum mechanics. One of the interesting ideas that arises from this is that um, the mathematics that are relevant at the quantum scale become irrelevant at our macroscopic or mesoscale, if you will. Uh, but then they once again emerge at the very large kind of astronomical scale. Now, does it mean that the astronomical scale is exactly quantum, absolutely not. It just merely means that some of the same laws, some of the same equations applies at both the, the largest and the smallest scales. It begs the question, what else is there? What, what other interesting connections are we missing? What lies below the quantum scale? And what lies further beyond, above the macroscopic astronomical scale? These are some of the questions that I'm interested in. My name is Konstantin Batygin. I'm an assistant professor of planetary science at Caltech.
and I am interested in understanding how planetary systems form and evolve. To hear the full-length interview this video was based on, check out our podcast at patreon.com thoughtcafe. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video.